there is still active explosives inside this grenade. Bomb Squad van comes out, and then it's one guy, and he has a briefcase with him. And as he's walking by us, he goes, wish me luck. All right. Hello, uh, my name is Fallen Cause, and I used to work for a company called uh, Stary Clean. If that name sounds familiar, you don't know where you heard it or where it's from. That is one of the companies or the company that owns the TV show Hoarders. It's critical. It's life or death at this point. These are real people. I just can't get a grip on it. Buried by the weight of their things. I don't know if people in other countries have Hoarders, uh, the TV show, but it's a fairly big uh, cultural icon in at least the United States. That is, you know, was my job from about October of 2018 all the way to December of 2019. And uh, my employment kind of fizzled out then. So when I was there, when I, well, let's start at the beginning. When I first started uh, my job there, there was kind of an introductory period. My boss, you know, needed to know, are you good for the job? Um, you know, can you stomach it? Things like that. So my very first job was nothing to write home about. It was, you know, get this bottle of Lysol, get this rag, clean this entire room, just clean the walls up and down. There you go. The time that actually I was told, okay, you're in, we named jobs that were worthy of it. And this job was named Parmesan cheese. The reason for it is entirely my fault. So content warning for those of you uh, listening and watching, I'm going to be speaking very bluntly about very bad smells and also cleaning up uh I, there's no other way to say it. Um, grease spots, human grease spots. Uh, nothing. I never dealt with the dead bodies, but I did clean up what's called decomp or OPIM, other potentially infectious material. So anything that's not blood, although I was trained for blood as well. So uh, yeah, if that's not really your thing, maybe skip this one. Would you mind telling the audience about what hoarding is? Sure. Um, so I am not a therapist at all so please before anything else i'm just some schmuck on the internet but from what i have seen and understand hoarding is not just someone being lazy or you know not caring about themselves it's more so a mental illness so one of the big things that the tv show has that we never did which i wish more crews did is having a psychiatrist or a therapist on site. Because when we went out to jobs, you know, hoarding jobs, we didn't have the luxury of, you know, being able to talk someone through, you know, hey, you know, you really should get rid of this because it has black mold you know, and can make you sick. You know, you can let go of this. And, you know, they were like, no, 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 I, I need this for this reason, that reason, it's sentimental to me. You know, things like that. So, yeah, hoarding is more of a mentality, not so much a character flaw as some people might, you know, see it as. So this horde, um, it, it was a horde, and uh, the guy that had the horde, he had died inside of it. Uh, the son was the one that had contacted us and contracted us to do it. So the guys that went in before us, the unfortunate soul there, had died on his bed. Two guys from the crew went out ahead and had broken down the, the bed and cleared most of that room, but they had to clear a path up through the horde. Now, I was not told that this was a decomp job. I was only told that it was a hoarding job. Aw, oh, do you guys smell that? Ew, it's a shameless promo. Hi everyone, I'm Azil, and I have a question for you. Do you like gender? I know I do, and that's why I'm here to tell you about the special trans edition of the classic Azil plushie, which is now available at azil.me slash trans plushie. This version of the plushie comes with a cute little trans pride hoodie, making it the perfect gift for the gender enthusiast in your life. Whether that's you, a loved one, or a demon to whom you must sacrifice my fluffy stuffed flesh for eternal life. 50% of all profits from the sales of the special trans edition of the Azeal plushie go directly to the VRChat Trans Academy, a non-profit trans community which I would personally call the most inclusive space on the internet. Or if you'd just like the original plushie, that is also still available at azeal.me slash plushie. Either way, thank you very much for your support, and now, back to your regularly scheduled content. So we cleared the downstairs out. Uh, my boss said, don't open that mini fridge. And I was like, why? She's like, just don't open it. Uh, later, I learned that it was 
full of all sorts of spoiled foods, which is a common theme at pretty much any big hoard. And we had cleared the the downstairs out, uh, some of the other rooms, and we worked our way upstairs to the uh, bedroom. Before that, they had actually found a uh, 9mm high point pistol, which is also kind of a common thing, finding guns at hordes, uh, that was so rusted shut that I actually couldn't open the slide. I couldn't open the action because it had just sat in the horde for forever. So there's the room, the, the bedroom there, and my boss, because we were wearing respirators at the time, I thought it was just for dust and debris. It was for the actual uh, smell. My boss said, you are going to go in that room and remove your respirator. I have no idea. I'm like, will do, boss. Go in the room, take off my respirator, and I'm just standing there. And I look over, I'm like, am I good? Can I put this back on? And everyone's like looking at me confused, like, what? What the hell are you on? My boss says, like, do you smell anything? And I'm like, what? Parmesan cheese? And everyone just busts out laughing and she says, okay, you're in. I am going to ruin uh, some food for you later uh, because my nose is super weird. But, you know, at that moment, my boss is like, you're in, you know, you're cool. You're fine. So, yeah, that's how I actually maintained my job. I got the job, but that's how I actually was in with the uh the crew so the crew was three other guys and then me and then my boss uh, my boss wasn't always at the job she was there for like the bigger you know badder more more involved jobs um i'm gonna be calling them a b and m a was a college buddy of mine that actually got me into the job b was a's high school friend m was b's older brother so I had a connection to A, A had a connection to B, and then B had a connection to M, and you know M had a little bit of a connection to A. We're all the same kind of build, bigger kind of guys, beards, and the three or four of us have glasses. So it was a very homogenous looking uh, crew when we stepped in. Uh, we were, you know, really mistaken for brothers a whole lot and you know we would crack jokes uh rip on each other all the time like good friends do to me that was really important and to the other guys it was that was important too because one thing that we recognize and you know if, if you're going into this line of work which i would actually recommend honestly i'll get into that later but the one thing that you have to keep in mind when you're doing this job is for us it's tuesday i went to wawa i got my energy drink i got my my bang or my you know my monster normally like peach monster fucking great but i would get my energy drink get my sandwich and i'd be good to go it's tuesday when we show up to that job that can be the worst day of someone's life either it's a client that may have lost someone uh normally they weren't around for the job they were just like hey get it done let me know when it's you know when it's over and thankfully i wasn't at too many decomp jobs it was mostly hordes and cleaning god forbid a cat house but that was normally what we did again i'll get into cat houses later but when we show up and it is you know the worst day of someone's life we had to be be able to, you know, put them at ease. When you see four guys, you know, that are big, some, you know, A has like sleeve tattoos on both arms, you know, we can look a little intimidating. So we have to turn ourselves into teddy bears. And one of the ways we do that is we rip on each other. We're friends. We're just, you know, we're, we're just dudes having a good time. We're just bros being dudes. And because we were having fun with the job and, you know, just laughing, carrying on, whistling while we work, that was enough to put not all clients but most clients at ease a little bit you know be like okay you know this this is a, the, these are safe guys you know i'm safe to let go a little and that was huge for us and also for them and that was one of the parts of the job that you know made me really enjoy the job was because you know we had a great crew it was a small crew four guys and if we didn't have a client around golden uh we could do what you know i mean not do whatever we want but you know we would be able to you know work at our own pace do our own thing things like that and you know it'd be more of you know a, a bonding experience for all of us and that even strengthened us even more for when we did have to comfort those clients we also went through the literal shit uh because so a and i had uh were living together at the time so we had gone to this job and the entire crew was there to clean this entire house a and i were told that we had to go into the dog room and clean it we didn't have to take care of the furniture or anything just take care of the, the dog room the dog room 
was where they had kept their dogs. It was a master bedroom, and the dogs were in there for an extended period of time. Uh, if you take a look at the pictures that I sent, the room with all of the turds all over the floor, that is not that room, but it's pretty much what it looked like. That, you know, if you take a look at that room that I sent, expand that by like four or five times of square footage of you know, just dog shit. Compound the fact that this was the middle of summer. It was 95, 97 degrees, no air conditioning because, you know, the, the house had no utilities and we are big bearded dudes. We were sweating like pigs. It was miserable. And A was like cleaning the bathroom and he goes in with a shirt and he comes out without his shirt. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, you, you know what we're doing, right? And he's like, I'm hot. I'm sweaty. I'm fat. I, I, I can't do this. I need to cool myself down. And I think about it for a second and I'm like, you know what? You're right. And I take my shirt off too. And we're just using um, the, I don't know if you've had to take up floor tacks for carpeting, but it's these little wooden strips with uh, nails poking through them. But uh, anyway, we were using like these tools to scrape that you use to take up tacks scraping the dog shit off just shirtless we smelled fucking terrible uh i had to take like two three showers to actually get that stink off of me i had all sorts of lovely smells at my job and the the thing is, is that feces is not the worst possible smell that you could have. There are all sorts of really terrible smells. There is obviously decay. One of the, the, the decon jobs that I remember, apparently, you know, the person that passed away had also passed away on their bed. That was normally the thing. Um, I've also heard that recliners and couches are the other things because, you know, they want to be comfortable because, you know, they feel bad and that's how they go. So we had to clean this, this bed up and all that but as we were coming up the stairs the smell of death was actually there that was the parmesan cheese was the time where i had an introduction to a light version of it because most of that smell is, was gone the infectious material part of it it's very greasy because it's a lot of oils and you know mucous membranes spinal fluid things like that things that are very viscous very greasy so the smell lingers that was my first time where i had an unadulterated smell of the smell of death um at least in a home environment and it's very true if you've ever heard you know people saying that the smell of decay is the same smell as like an old folks home or or the smell of old people, you know, the elderly, they are right, but it's a lot, I don't want to say sweeter, but it is sweet in some aspects. You know, you hear the expression, the sickly sweet smell of death. That that's what that is. Take, you know, that old person smell and a little bit of an acrid sweetness. So it's like kind of like a if you let a, a peach sit out and then like it like all the water goes out of it. A little bit, yeah. It's it's a bit more. <sighs> pardon the expression, but it's a bit more meaty than that. Um, take take a peach, take a rotting peach, and then take a rotting steak and just smash them together. That's what that smells like. How lovely. Um, so it's bad. Oh, it, you yeah. know, it's it's bad. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the worst thing. Um. The, the next step up is is feces, is shit. And I, I'm specifying dog and human, actually. Not great either, but you know what to expect. I mean, we've all taken dumps in the bathroom. You know, I'm, I'm sure we most of us have smelled dog shit. You know, if you have pets, you, you, you know what's going on. Um, so there, there's that. The next step up is, well, food, yes. And I say steak specifically because there was a job where there was, it was one of those fridges that up top is where you just have your cold stuff and down below is where you have your freezer. The freezer was packed. Like it was a very well stocked fridge years ago. Apparently this freeze, this uh, entire refrigeration unit had sat there for like 10 years powered. And then another four or five not powered. So when we actually emptied the freezer portion, is are any of you familiar with the young adult well you know really children's books Banicula mm -mm. no so Banicula is actually really cute stories it's about a family that gets a pet rabbit uh the pet rabbit 
but is white with uh, really red eyes. So it's the story of like the dog, like the family dog. And I think there's like another character there. And they're trying to prove that this bunny is an evil vampire. And the telltale sign of, you know, Benicula, you know, striking is that the bunny would uh, suck the, the, the life, the juices out of vegetables and they would turn all white, you know, ghostly white. This is what the stakes that were coming out of the freezer were like. They were not gray, white. There was a little bit of gray, but they were just, they looked like unpainted ceramic steaks, but they were very much uh. meat adjacent. Yeah, they were meat adjacent. And it was fantastic because the meat itself was white and gray. And then there was all sorts of pink and red juice around it. Thankfully, they were in vacuum sealed bags. So the way that we would do a lot of like a trash it very quickly to get them out of the dumpster, which there's a picture of the dumpster, you know, the kind of dumpsters that we used. We would have one guy holding a bag, another guy shoveling things into the bag. In this instance, we had a third guy tying the bags up and then a fourth guy running the bags from the house into the dumpster. Other times you just have us tie the, all the bags up and then just fire lining them down. Uh, but at that job, uh, we were like, whatever you do, don't drop the meat into the bag. Lay it down gently because we do not want that to break and the smell to go everywhere. So that was a fantastic experience because I never knew meat could turn that color. Uh. <sighs> yeah, That's great. But meat is one thing. And again, I didn't smell that meat. But another is dairy. There was one job where there was we were in the basement of the of the house and we there was black mold everywhere by the way um as soon as you walked into that basement your skin would itch your eyes would burn um we had respirators and we could still feel feel that spiciness of the mold get into our mouths and our throats. It was a terrible time for everyone involved. So, you know, again, if you're looking to get into that line of work, be prepared for that. Uh, take the proper precautions. Be safe. Uh, don't be an idiot like me who doesn't want to shave his beard because it looks good because the, the respirator won't make a full seal. That's part of the reason why we were getting that spicy air into, at least for me, because that beard won't create a full seal. Um, so don't be like me. Be smart. Be safe. Um, but there was a chest freezer in there as well. And I forget who it was. Thankfully, it wasn't me. They open it and they close it really quickly. And they're like, we have to take this outside. And we're like, why? They're like, there is a lot of ice cream in there. And we're like, cool. So we do the rest of the basement. Uh, there was a ton of all sorts of things. And the problem is, is that there was there was some kind kind of like sentimental baskets in there. So even though there was all sorts of black mold in there, um, the person who had hired us, even though they didn't want the baskets, the person that they had hired us on behalf of, they wanted to keep the baskets and were like, you, you do realize this is mold, right? And they're like, yeah, it's not up to me. You know, just, just put them in, tra in plastic bags and we'll take it from there. We're like, okay. But we get this freezer outside and we open it. My God. Um, so if you have smelled spoiled milk specifically, not cheese, spoiled milk that has been left in the sun, mix that with low tide. That's what it was like. It was like uh, the trip to the beach from hell. And our vans had to have been like five, six hundred yards. I'm bad with uh, distance, but it was very much away and we could still smell it clearly because of the way that the wind was traveling, but it was just a light breeze. That was insanely bad. Um, and the thing is, is that I forget the specifics, but I know that it was hard for us to get the ice cream out of the chest because ice cream comes in paper containers. So the problem with that is that all the ice cream was, well, it went from solid to liquid to gelatinous. And and all of that had congealed not only inside the containers, but it also had turned the papers gelatinous too. So you basically had to like scoop this 
like you know gravy this this gravy mixed with cornstarch slop in order to get it out and we did not want to deal with that um also uh you can't just throw away refrigerators and freezers because of freon you actually have to have someone who's qualified come out and drain the freon out and then you can toss it we were not qualified for that so we i i don't remember but i think we just kind of left that as a present for the freon guy oops mm -hmm. uh but the thing is that wasn't even the worst and by far the worst smell and i mean all of my guys can back me up on this the worst smell is a cat house it's exactly as it sounds if anyone has cats you know in their home and you have a cat room take that smell and multiply it by a thousand um cat piss has uh ammonia in it it's i mean if you have ammonia cleaners in your house or if you've ever cleaned with ammonia it's a very strong acrid smell that will just punch you straight in the nostril that is everywhere then and you have this you know nostril punching smell mixed with a a greasy kind of like it smells greasy and whatever those you know the particles in that is it sticks inside your nostrils so it's it's indescribable it's it, it smells kind of like a smoker's house as well i i can't explain it um and it gets even worse it gets multiplied if there's cobwebs there too uh because it either gets on your your mask we normally use n95 masks um, um, or your respirator or whatever. And if those cobwebs stick, guess what? You are smelling that all day, um, it, unless you change your masks out. But if you run out of masks, you are SOL, my friend. Uh, you just have to live with it. But the thing is, you get nose blind to it in about an hour in change. Um, but as soon as we come out for like our half hour lunch and we go back in, you immediately get punched with it again. It was amazing just how how greasy and acrid that that smell is i it's indescribable other than that it is it's just such an overpowering smell and it gets everywhere it's very very hard to clean it's on the same level as uh cigarette or cigar smoke um because it gets into every little pore in the house if you have painted walls the only way to really get it out is to strip the paint off the walls uh because it will actually get into to the pores whoa it's amazing just how pungent and hard it is to get out so if you know if any of y'all out there have cat rooms make sure you take care of them empty the litter boxes you know you know please take care of your animals regardless of course but make sure you're actually keeping up that room too don't let it get too bad uh because you might not be able to get the smell out of that room i mean actually you know my bedroom right now used to be a cat room but i i'm glad that i had that knowledge to actually take care of it because every single so uh, soft surface get rid of it um it's borderline not salvageable maybe if you're lucky you can but safe bet is just get rid of it clean this the hard surfaces as much as you can um lysol is good uh, I, i'll get into all the cleaning solutions that we had but just scrub the hell out of everything because even after you do that my room smelled like a cat room for about a week two weeks afterwards and that's with my fan going and opening my windows uh it can linger um so maybe it'll go away maybe it won't it all depends so please take care of your cat rooms bed bugs are an issue <laughs> bed bugs I don't have a whole lot to say on them other than if you've ever had them, you know, if you have not, pray that you don't. Because when this is another one of my first jobs, we had to deal with the cat house smell. There was human waste on the walls about waist height, which is actually surprisingly common in this line, you know, in that line of work, uh, because like 80 times out of 100, at least you're dealing with elderly people. And if they're incontinent, well, that that's just a fact. They're not able to get to the bathroom in time. So. So, you know, you just kind of get used to the fact that like, okay, you know, this brown smear here is probably not a, a mounds bar, you know, smeared on it. It's probably what you think it is. Uh, so we had cat house, we had that, and there was bed bugs. And my boss, my boss even straight up said, you know, we're going to be bagging up a couple of mattresses that have bed bugs in it. You're going to put on a full Tyvek suit. You're going to put uh, Tyvek booties on, and we are going to duct tape that shit. You know, we're going to duct tape the booties 
to the Tyvek suit so that we probably don't get bed bugs back with us because those bastards will cling to any surface imaginable and they breed very, very quickly. They're incredibly hard to get rid of. Afterwards, we had actually did what we called bombing the house where um, you would get like, you know, paint buckets that you can get at like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. We would get those, fill them with water, and then we would take this like, it was a proprietary uh, puck, but you would rip it open and just drop it into the water and it would create some kind of like chlorine gas solution, like you were gassing the house. Um, so, you know, basically make sure everyone's out of the house, drop it and then leave. And we gassed that house to hopefully kill all the bed bugs. But again, once they're in there, there's almost no guarantee, at least from us, where we weren't exterminators either, at least from us that probably you're OK, but it's not always a you know a guarantee. So bed bugs are just awful, awful, awful little bastards. Another awful little bastards is cockroaches. Now, because we named some jobs, uh, it was just uh, this this uh, guy's name. So we're going to call it John's. John's was kind of where I broke a little bit because uh, there it was an elderly gentleman. He had sores all over his arms, had a lot of like band-aids, but even then there were still open sores as well. And it was a pretty bad hoarding job. Um, he didn't have any pets, but there was a lot of like, uh, you know, spilled whatever it was, a lot of like car cardboard that was wet that he probably put down just so he could walk but even then it wasn't always a dry piece of cardboard the oven actually had to get taken out which is fun because the gas uh was slightly leaking so that was a fun thing to learn that we had to wait for the maintenance crew to come by and take the oven halfway through this job it was a week-long job and we had to you know once we were you know we were aware of the gas leak uh we just had to keep working until we could get maintenance in there to wheel it away and close it off but the reason i broke is is this guy obviously needs help. He really liked his coffee. He would have a coffee in the morning and he would have a coffee like after lunch. And he got it from a Keurig that he had. And it came time finally for us to take the Keurig away. There were cockroaches all throughout that coffee machine. Oh. And as soon as we learned that we, you know, we just called it the roach coffee. Like, you know, whenever we were thinking it, we would just say, hey, at least it's not roach coffee coffee bad and the thing is is that it wasn't even surprising because the roaches were so common in that place that they would be crawling up the walls you know they'd be having fun in the corner whatever and there were so many that they would crawl above the ceiling and there were so many that it wasn't surprising if one just fell on your head oh um yeah and i mean it just didn't happen once or twice it happened to me like four to five times every single day we were there for an entire solid week because it was a travel job and i mean to hammer home the fact that this can happen anywhere this travel job was in arlington virginia yes like that arlington virginia um you know washington dc so we were uh washington dc maryland delaware and the upper part of west virginia we care we covered a lot with just this one crew and you know this this horde this you know poor guy he he actually worked with tax documents and that was amazing to learn that his his office that was a bit better than the rest of the apartment but it was filled with these tax documents that were like roach eaten. There was, you know, roach shit on these documents. And he just worked like that. And he wasn't really getting the fact that you need to throw things away. You, you know, you need to, you need to let go of a lot more than what you have. And we had brought some U-Haul boxes with us because one of the things that he wanted was take everything in these boxes because they were, you know, they, they, the roaches had eaten food through them and the boxes were no longer good. So take everything in these boxes and put them in new boxes because apparently he was going to move out, but those boxes were for it, you know, for him to move out and he never did. So we were just taking the boxes from one area to another, essentially. And 
halfway through packing up these boxes, I was with A, and I'm like, hey, I just, I don't know if I can do this job anymore. Um, and this was like halfway through my job. And A's like, whoa, 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 whoa what, what do you mean? I'm like, I feel like I'm killing this guy. You know, we're, what are, what are we doing here? We're, you know, we're moving this stuff from one to another. I can smell like he had these like little uh, ceremonial uh, dolls. I, I, I don't want to use the word dolls, but I can't think of the term right now. I can smell these. It's not, not the box that it came from. It's this thing itself. And we're just putting it in this new box. It's going to make him sick. You know, he may very well die because we're not doing our job. And, you know, he had to, you know, kind of talk me off the ledge a little bit. And he's like, we're doing our job because you can't just throw things away. They have to agree with it. Otherwise, it's a form of vandalism. It's it's a form of theft. It's a form of property theft, because if they don't want you to take their stuff, you're stealing. So it's, you know, he's like, you're doing your job. We can only do so much for him if he doesn't want to be helped we can't really help him. You know, we, we can only help him as much as he wants to be helped. That put a lot of things in perspective for me. You know, afterwards, I was a bit easier. You know, it was I was a bit easier on myself. I was a bit easier on the clients. And that's where my mentality of, you know, this is the worst day of someone's life, you know, came from. And that's why, you know, I was already having fun with these guys. But afterward, you know, before it was just having fun with friends. It then, for me, turned into having fun with friends with a purpose. Having fun not only with my friends, but also with the clients. We could get the client in on the, the inside jokes that we had you know with i mean we had quite a few clients where they would start ripping on us a little bit you know like oh you know good job dropping that and it's like thanks you know if if we could get them involved we would be able to help them more because you know with with john's with, with john um he just kind of was very distant um you know he would just sip his coffee and let us work uh which is nice but you know some clients would get in the way and you know like no 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 don't, you know this is going to go over here you know please don't touch that but that gave me not purpose, but, you know, perspective of things. So, yeah, uh, I want to go into a my most fun job with the most fun story now because John's is so bad. This one was great. We called this one Nan's Last Stand. So the context is, is that um, the daughter of a hoarder had called us and said, but hey, I need, you know, my father had passed away, my mother had passed away previously, I need this house cleaned up. And it was floor to ceiling. We just started, you know, you ha it was one of those jobs where you just have to start at the front door and, and move your way slowly in. And, you know, we were having, you know, a really good time. You know, the, the client was not the person who had the problem. So it's like, yeah, toss this, toss that. Like, cool, cool, cool. Shovel it in. And the picture of that dumpster, the 20 yard dumpster, we had four of those throughout this entire job. That's how packed this little... It was a little townhouse and it was so packed up that we needed basically 80 yards of dumpster just to toss everything. It was packed. So over the course of the job, every so often, um, I don't know if it was, I think it was an aunt of the clients uh, whose uh, nickname was Nan. And Nan was awesome like you know the, the client was joking with us too but nan, nan was merciless uh she would constantly rip into us have jokes with us have fun with us uh she was awesome and also the clients were actually helping us do our job which it's not required obviously we're here to do the job for you but if you do have to uh hire one of those cleaning services if you're able to help us out a little bit that's fantastic uh it makes the job go by faster if you're being charged by the day that's good for you and you know you're able to learn the crew a bit more and you know your stuff better than us um so if you're able to like you know take the keep stuff you know and being able to sort Work that out even better. So this job was going, you know, lightning fast, just boom, 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 boom. And one of the final days, Nan unfortunately fell and she was elderly. Thankfully, you know, I say thankfully, but thankfully she just broke her arm. I was in another room. I hear uh, a thud and then a help. So I'm already on it, but uh, B was there before me and he's like, hey, we need someone to call 911. M, his brother, started calling. 911. Uh, thankfully, B and M were both Boy Scouts. I mean, technically, I was a Cub Scout, but I wasn't a Boy Scout. So they knew how to do a little bit of first aid, get, you know, at least get her arm in a way that at least was good for her. You know, uh, A and I were like clearing a path because it was a half done 
on John. We were just clearing a path, making sure that it was safe for her to, you know, leave the building. Uh, emergency services show up. And I say emergency services and not ambulance because there was ambulances and the fire department. They brought a fire truck with them. And I was really curious about that. There was like five, six EMTs there. Uh, the fire guys were just kind of sitting in their truck because they're like, oh, the, you know, the EMTs got this handled. And I was standing outside on the porch because, you know, I don't want to get in the way. They already got it handled. It's fine. P P the pros are here. B&M are inside. We're good. And I was talking with the EMT outside and he's like, you guys do this for a living? And I'm like, yeah, this is our job. And he and the dumpster was pretty much full at this point. And he's like, you know, you all of that went in there. And I'm like, well, that's actually our third dumpster. And he just he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's our third dumpster. It was packed pretty tight. The reason why they had brought so much, so many resources to this house is they said that they had a call about an elderly woman a long time ago, like a couple of years ago. And the horde was so bad that they had to go through the second story window in order to get to that person. So they had brought everything here because they were worried that they had to do that again. And he looked inside and he's like, you guys did a really good job. And I'm like, we're not even done yet. Like, you know, we got two more days here. And he, you know, he nods his head and, and I'll never forget it. He goes, man, I would hate to have your job. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what the hell do you mean? You know, you would hate to have my job. I, you know, I would hate to have your job like this job is is fine i'm cool with it and that just kind of like you know blew my mind but i mean you know it's a disgusting dirty smelly job so i mean i get it and they're able to take nan away uh she was fine we got an update from you know from nan that she was in the hospital she was going to be there for a few days but thankfully totally fine and uh this that was the third day that we were there fourth day goes on you know, we get the update and uh you know the client's like hey you guys got this i'm not going to be around for the last day cool last day was just sweeping up vacuuming things like that now i need to preface this that uh the the client's father was a retired uh baltimore city police officer so in the bed room we actually found like a few stab proof vests and some old handcuffs and you know things of that nature and we're cleaning in the last day b is in uh that master bedroom that we had found all that stuff in and i'm in the room next just probably sweeping up and i hear his vacuum going and i hear it shut off and all i hear is uh guys and i poke my head in through the door i'm like are you good b and he's like i I need you to come here. I have something. All right, this is going to be a, uh, you know, this is going to be interesting. And we walk in through the door and there is a grenade sitting on the dresser. And we're like, huh, that's neat. Um, That's not something that uh, you see every day. We're used to guns, uh, but grenade, that's a new one. And and uh, we're like, and B looks at us and he's like, what do we do? And uh, <laughs> his brother's like, well, maybe we should get out of the house and call 911. And we're like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. But me being me, because, uh, you know, I'm interested in, you know, small arms, firearms, things like that. I'm like, hold on, let me get my phone out and take a picture of this thing. So I took a picture of it and we all go outside. And as we're waiting for the police to arrive, I'm Googling it. And it's actually a Japanese World War II grenade that... I'm pretty sure uh, Forgotten Weapons on YouTube did a video on the Japanese knee mortar, where it's literally a grenade that I don't know if you pull the pin or not, but it's a you know a mortar tube that you put on your knee or your thigh or whatever, and you drop it in and boom, out it shoots. I would not I would not want to be the guy that is using a mortar and explosive on his knee, but to each his own. But yeah, that's what it was. So it's like okay, and I look at the picture. And it's like, well, there's holes drilled in it, but the pictures of the decommissioned grenades of this of this type of grenade do not look like this grenade, but it also doesn't have the pin. So it's obviously safe, but what's going on with this thing? So uh, I, I tell the guys about this. And meanwhile, M is on the phone calling the police and he says uh, they want to know if it's, you know, if it's active, if, if it's a threat. And I'm like, dude, I'm looking at this. I have no idea. Like, you know, it it's obviously safe because it hasn't gone off with a pin and over at that point what like 60 years um 
So I'm like, just call it and then just just do it. And he's like, yeah, we're pretty sure. All right, thank you. Click. And the police come by on cruiser and two guys get out. And uh, the the guy, the the I guess the more experienced guy uh, comes up to us and goes, hey, are you the guys that called about a grenade? Yes, sir. Uh, are you sure? Or that it might be a threat. And we're like, we don't know. He says, okay. Reaches up to his radio and, sa- and he's, he says, shut it down. Cop cars come out of the fucking woodworks. Every single uh, alleyway that they had. Lights, sirens, everything. Just all at once. It's out of the matrix. All of them are hop out, knocking on doors saying, hey, you know, we need you to back up. We need to make a, we need to clear the area. As this happens simultaneously, the, the cop that was talking to us goes, all right, come with us. You have to stand over here now. We're like, okay. So we go over. We're, you know, they're taking our statements and stuff, and we're just hanging. We're just waiting for the bomb squad. A uh, couple of minutes later, bomb squad van comes out, and then it's one guy gets out, goes into the back, puts on just a flak vest, like not like the full EOD gear that you see in like war movies, just a vest. And he has a briefcase with him. And as he's walking by us, he goes, Wish me luck. And he just goes into the house and we're just standing there just flabbergasted like good luck and we see him come out of the house on the phone looks up looks back nods and goes back into the house and he comes back out of the house with his briefcase and we're like you know so what's the situation and he says um you're right to call us it was a deactivated grenade but it's not inert there is still active explosives inside this grenade that's why the 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 deactivated grenade did not look like the pictures on google for some god knows what reason this grenade was deactivated in such a way that they could still keep the explosives in why so that's uh that was nan's last stand and then afterwards after that whole thing the cops leave and we go back in clean up finish our our day and never look back i love that job and the grenade just put the the cherry on top it was a wild ride the next thing i want to talk about is another sad one and it did not happen at this job but if you do and especially now that you know you know Starry clean is the hoarders guys even if you see uh you know especially if you see a tv crew but even if you don't see a tv crew please mind your own business most you know you know most decent people will mind their own business but if if you get nosy please don't bother anyone it's either again the worst day of someone's life or the crew is just tired and they don't want to deal with any more questions you know please just let them work give people space even if you do know it's not something that you really want to know and this was no exception i feel bad but also we wouldn't have known b had went off to a vacation in Hawaii and left the rest of us here. He said it was for church. It was youth group and he was doing stuff. It was a vacation. I don't care, B. If you're watching this, I don't fucking care. You abandon us. And we were laughing and, and joking and ripping on him at his expense. And uh, it was the three of us, me, A.M. and our boss. And uh, finally, the the client, the our client, our contact was the daughter. And I only saw the mother once during this entire job. And that was when she came out of the house. And she was crying, inconsolable. And that's because when she was walking down the steps and going into the car, and she goes, you know, how how dare you? How dare you laugh at an old woman, you know, at her expense? You know, I can't believe you. And she walks to the car. And we're like, well, what was that about? And uh, the daughter goes, you guys can start wherever you want. I have to take care of her. And we're like, okay, understood. And we get into the house and it smells bad, but, you know, it wasn't a cat house bad. So we didn't really think much of it. In case you were wondering, we just use snow shovels, just, just snow shovels. And we just scoop into a into a uh, contractor bag scoop bag scoop bag so i was holding a bag a was scooping for me m was holding our boss's bag and she scoops hits something and then she goes mommy when the crew says mommy it's already bad when our boss who has been doing this longer than any of us goes mommy you shut up and pay attention to what she's going to say next she goes if you see a two liter bottle be very very careful and we're like okay why there were two liter bottles with the tops cut off this poor woman was so incontinent that she couldn't make it to the bathroom in time so she started 
going to the bathroom in these two liter bottles. And they were just set on the floor like landmines throughout this horde. Now is the time for me to ruin more food for you because my goddamned nose, for whatever reason, did not smell piss and shit that day. I swear to God, I smelled roasted turkey. That memory uh, stayed with me so long that in November, in Thanksgiving, I couldn't eat turkey because all I thought about was the two liter job. Don't ask me why. And it was so bad. It was because the, the, the waste was really greasy. And I put two and two together because you can tell a lot about someone just the way they keep their house, but especially in a horde because there's a lot of things there um you know there's a lot of belongings there that can tell a story you can piece things together and what had happened was is that this woman had so many pizza boxes lying around this couch that was just coated in waste she must have been eating so much pizza that because you know she couldn't cook she really couldn't take care of herself all that well she would just keep getting delivery over and over and over again and that's what you know made her waste so you know so liquid and very greasy and she was just going in the two liter bottles that she got with her food there was also off to the side one of those cheap trash cans that you can get at walmart that with just the the swinging lid that had friendly's ice cream containers also full of waste yeah it's gross yeah it's it's even more sad and we couldn't really do anything for her other than clean the house and most of that house had you know at least most most of that living room had to go and the whole time i'm like you know i'm just because i was the one taking care of the the couch and the mo the main living room uh when we had most of the uh trash up off the floor and i couldn't stop thinking about how this woman must have lived you know how she could have been trapped on that couch for so long because there was a little radio sitting next to where the couch was we had taken it out at this point and i turned it on because i wanted music and it was preset to an oldies station and i didn't want to change that station so i was just you know cleaning this this living room listening to probably the same radio station that she had been listening to for years and it was just it was otherworldly in a way um because i you know not to get too esoteric but you know i i felt a connection to her you know i you know i kind of felt her pain but also i i personally felt a little bit of hope for her because we were there we were helping we were cleaning her house we even had to take a toilet out of the bathroom because it was so bad we're not able to build up we these hands weren't meant to create they were only meant to destroy but you know we're at least able to break down so that others can build them back up in the correct way and the job for all of its flaws and faults and boils and bumps it's very satisfying because you go from you know a floor to ceiling horde to usually bare walls bare floors clean smelling like you know lemon lysol and that's a good feeling it's satisfying it's rewarding in its own way and you're able to help people so yeah two liter bottles man got, you gotta watch out for them you, they they will get you the last job story that i have is oh well I'll, I'll let you cut this up so I'll, I'll start over um another job that we had is sad in its own separate way because i don't know the specifics but this house had needed a swat team to be called in and they used tear gas in the entire house so we were the lucky ones to go in and neutralize the gas again uh b and m were more mainly the guys that would go ahead of us and they said hey th this house is bad make sure you are very careful on what you touch so what they had done is they had gone through just the living room and just sprayed this neutralizing agent everywhere and that created a staging area for us we would bring everything in well we didn't even bring everything in at the first we had to grab um you know cleaning agents lysol and that was about it and we wiped down those surfaces because how this specific gas worked i say tear gas i don't actually know what it is um hey if anyone knows or is a law enforcement personnel or whatever uh there is a picture that uh is there of a can uh it's called clear out um uh, there's a picture of that can so if anyone knows please tell me what that is i i would love to know what the chemical makeup of it is because it was like these little grains of sand of 
whatever that burns like hell. We mopped it up. And then from there, we went through the rest of the house, gassing as we went along and then wiping every single hard surface. If it was soft, toss it because the gas had to have saturated it. We, you know, do not wear it because it will interact with the oils of your skin. It was terrible. Well, it would have been terrible. And I remember I was in the basement because they had actually gassed the entire house. The basement they had uh, smashed in the glass blocks that you have in some basements. They just used a sledgehammer, smashed that bitch in and threw the gas in. And um, I was cleaning the floor and my I was tired of either standing or kneeling. So I just kind of laid on the floor and my forearm immediately started just burning. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I you know, wiped my arm and got a rag and everything. And it still burned like hell for the rest of the day. It was pretty, it was pretty terrible. And we just gassed that entire house. And again, like just thinking about what had happened there, um, someone I think was taken hostage and that's why they had gassed the entire house. But yeah, like tear gas and chemicals like that, they ain't no joke either. That was an amazing, amazing house. So yeah. So the, the, the solutions that we use, free tips for y'all. Number one, we would do mice jobs as well. If if you have a mouse problem and you get an exterminator and there's still, you know, mouse droppings and stuff, you don't need to call us or any kind of cleaning company. In my opinion, they do carry disease. If you're worried about that, absolutely hire someone who knows how to do it. But when we did it, um, we would vacuum up all of the waste and we would use Lysol um, because that that should be enough to kill most of the germs that mice have or can, you know, uh, spread to you in their waste. They're there are always exceptions to that rule, but that's normally what we would use at mice jobs. Um, for heavier, uh, like problem areas, something that's a bit greasier, a bit harder to clean up, that's really dried on, um, you can get it at at least Home Depot. It's called Zep, Z E P. For Zep degreaser, and there's either there's two different kinds that you can get. Well, two different kinds that we would use. There's the orange or the citrus one, and there's the purple. The orange one. One, smells lovely and is usually enough for any kind of uh, mess that you might have. It's great at doing what it does, and that's stripping grease. It's a degreaser. So if you have a really hard surface, you know, a really, you know, surface that's really hard to clean, and you are about to give up, get Zep, get a rag, don't use paper towels, get a rag, and and see if that works. The only thing is if you're cleaning wood, especially wood that is lacquered, don't use it. It will strip the lacquer right off the wood. It is bad shit. So use an N95, use some kind of uh, breathing protection, but it works well. And if the orange Zep isn't working, you, you know, you, you poor unfortunate soul. Um, there is purple Zep. Purple Zep does not smell like grapes. It smells like dead fish, but it works. It works better than the orange stuff. Most household uses, orange but man if the orange ain't doing it for you use the purple bleach is also used i don't have to tell you how bleach works bleach is bleach lysol as well and i actually at my current job um i work in pharmaceuticals now i essentially grow cells for you know uh cancer uh drugs oh wow yeah uh hey there's another uh uh interview for you absolutely yeah but when we're in the core when we're in the back when we're in the clean room we wear scrubs we wear hair nets and on our gloves whenever we uh what's called break task we're supposed to spray our hands with 70 percent ipa uh, isopropyl alcohol that stuff is i mean you know you can get it at walmart's uh ipa is not expensive it is very cheap and and I mean, hey, we're using it to clean our gloves in a, an environment that's what's called aseptic. It's not sterile, it's aseptic. That stuff is very good at, you know, cleaning germs and things like that. So if you're, you know, if you're a neat freak, if you're a clean freak, if you need things cleaned very well, IPA is very good. Yeah. Uh, IPA and nitrile gloves, that's really good for uh, disinfecting areas. The final cleaning tip that I have is I learned very, you know, I learned very quickly how to tackle messy rooms. When you are tackling a project, uh, first of all, if you can, don't let it get get that bad. If you know you, if you're worried, if you're seriously worried that you might have hoarding tendencies, please see someone. Please seek help. If someone you know or love 
might have these kind of tendencies, please talk to them. Um, if they're not listening and you feel comfortable with it, maybe talk to a professional and say, hey, you know, this is the person, they have this problem, what can I do? Uh, please reach out because not only can you get sick, you can get diseases, you will get you know, rodents, you'll get uh, pests, things will worsen. Um, and like I said, someone died in their horde. That's not uncommon. Um, I heard of another story of someone, of a woman who had her son in the house. The woman was the one that had the problem, but her son was actually crushed under the horde and she had no idea. It's very dangerous for anyone in a house. It's also a fire hazard. So please, if you know someone who has this tendency, if you do care about them, please get them help. These cleaning crews are not cheap, but if you feel like you can't do it alone, please get other people to help you out with it. And and, you know, the job taught me how to clean rooms. You know, I, I use it all the time for my my room. If I'm doing anything else, cleaning a room for uh, my job now, start in one corner or the biggest pile. Or if that intimidates you, if the small, if the uh, biggest pile intimidates you, go to the smallest pile. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's a single book out of place, put the book back, go to the next smallest pile. Maybe it's, you know, a couple of candy wrappers, throw those away and go to the next smallest and the next smallest and the next smallest. Because eventually the next smallest will be that biggest pile. If you're able to tackle the biggest pile and go down fantastic great but if you have that uh, executive dysfunction that i do have a little you know at least a little bit of you know, a bit more than i probably let on start those small projects and then build off of that get that momentum started and keep the that momentum going because when you you might not notice it at the time you're like well I'm, I'm not doing anything like that that's what it'll feel like you'll feel like you're spinning your wheels because it's like look at how much i have to go but if you can in that moment and you hear that in your mind look back and go look at how much i have done that will help you out and if that if that nagging in your in your head still isn't going on, don't worry about it. When you come back in the next day, I can't guarantee it. But for me, when I come back into that room the next day and I actually take a look at it, it's like, wow, this entire wall is clean. It's organized. It's great. It looks good. Um, and that to me gives me motivation to keep going, tackle that next smallest pile. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can keep going from there. Um, you don't have to take care of everything all at once. And this is life in general too. You don't have to take care of everything at once. Start with your smallest pile and go from there. One pile at a time, one moment at a time, one day at a time, just keep going. Just keep building that momentum. I loved that job when I did it because, you know, acts of service are incredibly gratifying. If you are someone who wants to help people, if you want to help people directly, you know, you want to see the people that you are helping and you can stomach everything that I just said, you know, if you're okay with dealing with a little bit of blood, decomp, these these hordes, these smells, it's a great way to do acts of service that you directly see that you help people. That's what kept me going through it all. That's what really made me not like the job to love that job because we were helping people. It was fantastic for me. And I carry that on at my current job for any future job that I have. To me, it's all about helping people. It's all about acts of service. Tell me a story. Tell me a story, I want to hear it You might think it's boring, but I'm interested